And here we are again. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning and good morning to you too. And good morning to you. And it is Saturday morning. Here we are, myself, Jimmy Botha. And I'm Professor Noodle Brain. Yes. Also known by Sadrine. Yeah. When uh, when when uh, we are my wife, then we are like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have you with us today. It is nice to um, spend another 40 minutes or so with you. And um, today's a bit different, uh, but we'll tell you about that in a moment. Do you want to do a prayer for us to start? Yes, I will do that for us. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this beautiful day. We thank you for this time we can share together. And while we're feeling separated from each other physically, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is with us to bind us together spiritually. And be with us as we enjoy this time and may we learn about you and learn something more about how you interact with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you. So, Professor Noodlebrain, this <coughs> morning... We are going to um, touch on a text that is uh, in in First Kings chapter twenty, um, but it's only a, a part of that text that really interests me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, Jonas is going to be reading that text for us a little bit uh, later. Um, but before he does, and before we get on with things, what's so special about today? Well, today all of our help is coming from children within our two churches so all of the different things that we do for our service today yes so we have like you said jonas doing the scripture reading mm -hmm. the verse reading we have a beautiful duet coming from two sisters olivia and amelia really looking forward to to them sharing that with us and at the end of the service, we have a young Richard who's going to play the piano, uh, a hymn for us. Yes, yes. again. And um, when we sing, what a friend we have in Jesus. Lovely. Yeah, so fitting to everything we're going to be talking mm. about today. Now, <clears throat> I'm not standing up and, and, and going to zoom in or anything. And that's simply because here we sit at the table. We have this bottle with us. Yes, I'm hoping you can help me with our uh, story today. Okay. So I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Mr. Heinz Ketchup Packet. Oh my goodness, Mr. Okay. Heinz Ketchup Packet. Yes. Okay. Is that the guy that's inside? That's inside the bottle, yes. All right, okay. So he, he's a lovely little ketchup packet that I picked up and um, I'm keeping him safe in this little bottle of water. Okay. So there's nothing special about what he's in he's okay. just in some water which he likes and he floats around in there but um he does exactly what i tell him so he listens to me is he like a goldfish or something no he's not quite like a pet or a goldfish no he just he's my wee pal <laughs> <laughs> and what do you mean by he listens to you well i can tell him to do something or give him an instruction and he'll do it can he like make a cup of tea no well it's, he's restricted to inside the bottle so ah. he can restrict his movements to either going up or down inside the bottle okay yes yeah, so, yeah all right so would you like a demonstration yeah okay but and then you're going to have to try okay i'll try my best all right so well, let me try first, and because you you probably won't believe me, all right? And then I'll give it to you and see if you can do it. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Ketchup Packet, go down. There we go. Keep going down. Yeah, keep going down. My goodness me. He's listening to you. Yeah, told you. Now, Mr. Ketchup Bottle, go up. She loves, he loves the top. He, he can't wait to get to the top. And uh, yeah, so do you want to try? Ketchup packet, <clears throat> go down. Yeah, you, you didn't listen to me. What do you mean? 
so listen to how the instruction needs to be. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Ketchup Packet, go down. Okay. Huh. Can you believe that? See? Mr. Ketchup Packet, go halfway up. My goodness, look at this. Mr. Ketchup Packet. No, let's stay. Stay. Where do you think you're going? Go back down. My goodness me. I would never have thought. All right, so Mr. Ketchup Packet, go all the way up. <laughs> okay, so if you think there's something that I'm doing, all right, here, you take it, <coughs> all right? So yeah. I'm going to speak. I'm going to concentrate. Very okay. Are you going to give I'll, the instructions? I'll give the instruction just okay. so that they think, well, I may be doing something. Okay, all right. But all right. I'm going to concentrate. If she's going to give the instructions, I'm going to concentrate to hopefully get him to not listen to what she's saying. Okay. So, Mr. Ketchup Packet, go down. Okay, stop. Mr. Ketchup Packet, keep yourself there. Mr. Ketchup Packet, go all the way up again. My goodness. Okay, so you try. I wanted to try for a while now. You're playing, but <laughs> I want the chance. Okay, Ketchup Packet, go down. You're, you're not listening. I, I, I heard everything you said. No. Why do you say I'm not listening? Do you understand the words that are coming <laughs> out of my mouth? The instruction is yes. Mr. Ketchup Packet. Mr. Ketchup Packet. And then you give the instruction. Does he only listen to that? Yes. You have to call him by his name. Okay. I'm sorry. I still don't believe this is going to work. Mr. Ketchup Packet, would you please go halfway down this bottle? <laughs> Do you see? You have to call him by his name. Mr. Ketchup Packet, will you please go all the way down? <laughs> Mr. Ketchup Packet, can you please go up very fast? Do you see how important is it to listen? <laughs> Mr. Ketchup, go down. What was I doing wrong? Oh, Mr. Ketchup Packet, please go down. There we go. <laughs> My goodness me. Mr. Ketchup Packet, I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Please go up. My goodness. <laughs> Professor, I am stunned. <laughs> so, do you know that we call Jesus yes. by all different kinds of names? Okay. okay you, you, you're a pastor, so um, you're more familiar with all the names that we call Jesus by, God by. But even though there's different names, we can speak to him and he'll hear us. You don't have to call him by one specific name, like Mr. Ketchup Packet listens to. That's the little beautiful thing about God, about yeah. Jesus. You can call out to him, you can pray to him, you can call upon him and he will hear you no matter what. You can be on your knees, you can be standing, you can be walking, you can be running, you can be driving. Yep. And... You could be in your office. Yes. But God gives us an instruction. Yeah. He does say, call on my name and he will hear us. And so it doesn't matter what that name is, he will hear us. Yeah. Yeah. And this verse that Richard is going to, uh, sorry, that Jonas is going to read for us in a moment. Mm -hmm. Inside that verse, there's a little bit that, I want you to listen to very carefully. I'm going to be talking about it a bit later and you'll see. Excellent. So, 
for those at home who would like to try this out and create your own Mr. Packet ketchup packet. Yeah, we want to see videos if you were yes. getting it right. It could be that the ketchup packet you're using at home doesn't have the same name and you might have to find that out. True. But if you really want to know, contact us. Love it. <laughs> thank you. Thank All you, right. Professor. Well, thank you for sharing my uh, time with us and with the kids. Yes. So now we get to listen to Olivia and Amelia. Yes. First of all, we can have the text, and then it is Olivia and Amelia. And then I do the sermon just about 20, 22 minutes or so. And then we have a song at the end. And that's how today will be going. Lovely. So it's lovely to have you all with us. Enjoy the next 25 minutes. Absolutely. God bless. See you guys next time. Paul Bach and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. On the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. You are the one at the beginning. One with the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now we What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Didn't want heaven without us. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name. my king what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus death could not hold you the veil tore before you silence the boast of sin and grave Heavens are roaring, praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Wasn't that good? I have a text I want to read to you. A text out of Second Kings. And just a bit of it. This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. I'll tell you a bit more about this text. I want to say thank you to Sadrine for teaching us a little bit uh, something so simple about how we can listen and how we are supposed to be listening. Uh, even as grown-ups, we have to be careful how we listen. Thank you to Amelia and Olivia for your beautiful song that you've just uh, given us. 
what a beautiful piece of music and we appreciate all the effort that you've put into practice for it and what a wonderful song that was also to Jonas for reading us the text I want to tell you a story about listening how often do you listen and does listening come easily to everyone how easy is it especially husbands maybe to listen to your wives maybe I should ask the wives if I'm allowed to do you listen enough to your husbands perhaps we should ask the children one or two questions do you listen to your parents maybe we should also ask do you listen to each other to your brothers and sisters to your friends what does it mean to listen the thing is we hear a lot of stuff going on around us but we don't always listen you see listening means that you are intentional about what is going on you heard something you gear yourself for something listening means that you think about what was said to you and now you have to respond to it there was one such day many years ago when my dad spoke and my brothers and myself thought that we were listening but we were just hearing and not properly listening see when I was a boy we used to make lots of different toys for ourselves we didn't have all the toys you get these days we especially enjoyed making stuff that happened in the sky we learned how to make parachutes you know you would throw up a parachute and it would come down we knew how to make aircraft out of paper and out of wood and they could fly but we also learned the skill of making kites have you ever made your own kite and I can fondly remember quite a few different kites that I made myself I remember the days when my kites didn't fly as well I remember the frustration when that happened but one day when we were living in Bloemfontein a city in South Africa with an Air Force base we lived inside the Air Force base we built a kite that we thought was indestructible we flew the kite all morning and then we continued having fun with it all day long we asked my dad if we could put the kite on the line of the fishing rod we thought that if we had it on the fishing rod it would go much further than only the bit of string we had my dad said to us that we were not allowed to put the kite on the front end of the fishing rod and that we had to behave ourselves now because he was on his way to go to work so after a while with no one at home to look after us we decided to bring out the fishing rod after all we allowed the kite to go out into the sky and we allowed the fishing line to keep running off of the spool in, on the fishing rod the wind was playing along very nicely that day and our kite started flying so far away from us that we could almost not see it anymore isn't it nice to have a kite that really works and you know you made that kite yourself I will tell you a little bit more about our kite toward the end of this 20 minute or so sermon I want to ask you about your prayer life today you see I think a prayer life is what is necessary for us to come to a point where God can say what the text said I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears I will heal you perhaps your prayer life is very brief and nothing says that God cannot say that sentence the sentence I have heard your prayer I have seen your tears I will heal you if if you never had a prayer life before you you will always hear that from God but why take a chance on it 
if you can help yourself to be in a place where you know God is always alongside. For me, that's the secret of good communication with God. It is the time when I position myself in such a way that I know He is never far away, always in easy reach. That means that we will probably have to read more of it from His Word. It is in God's Word, the Bible, where we find how this works. It is in the Bible where we learn how God is in a relationship with us and that we can speak to Him. It is in the Bible, God's Word, where we learn the value of prayer. It is there where we can learn that we can hear things but also listen carefully. And I will share some texts from the Bible with you uh, a little bit later on. Uh, when we, I will say what they are when we get there. But the thing is, we can pray to God for ourselves in order to find ourselves in a better place. Or we can ask God for things we need. Or we can thank God for the things He has done for us. These are all things we do in any relationship anyway. Why not have such a relationship with the person who created us, the creator of the universe? And then we realize that it doesn't have to stop with us when we start having a prayer life. Our prayer life and our relationship with God will grow a lot when we include others. So it's not just about this little box around me. We will soon realize that it becomes essential that we include others not only in our prayer lives, but in the way we talk to God, in the way that we appreciate what God has done for us, in the way that we listen to Him. Now, during this coronavirus, we certainly have an opportunity to do exactly this. How many people do you know personally that is directly affected by the virus at this moment? And how many people do you know that may be scared or fearful, not only for what the virus can do, but for what this actual situation does to our livelihood? We all can make a difference not necessarily by going out and doing something on the front line, and we're thankful for those who do, who, does, who do do that, but by staying home and speaking to God, by listening to Him and hearing what He has to say. When we listen to God, things can happen, because as opposed to just hearing whatever God says, when we listen, we might actually go into some kind of action. We can also do something good for someone else. Every human being has a responsibility for the part that they must play on this earth in history. In every individual, God has put a channel of influence that He uses to reach out to the world. He has given each of us the opportunity to touch the lives of others through prayer, even though we may never even meet some of those people personally. Our prayers make it possible for God to do for them what He could not have done if they did not pray. Satan claims the world as his own because of sin. And since part of God's inherent character is freedom, God will never use force in commanding obedience from any of us. He leaves us, men and women and children, to choose whom we will serve, God or Satan. So the Lord cannot arbitrarily step into any person's life. He would be violating the law of freedom if he did so. And Satan, always with a quick comeback, would immediately charge him 
by saying that he's unfair if he did interfere in someone's life. So Satan also knows that in the beginning, before sin came into this world, God had created human hearts with a desire and the ability to share with others what they themselves received from God. Sin alone made humans totally self-serving, selfish. The new birth experience recreates this original desire and ability in man. We want to help. Satan knows he cannot charge Jesus with taking unfair advantage when, he, when Jesus answers our prayers for others, since it was part of God's original plan. Satan knows that he is powerless when we petition God on behalf of of someone else. The devil understands more than most Christians do the power of intercessory prayer. Our prayers totally silence Satan's accusations and gives God the opportunity to work on behalf of so many who might have sought who might never have sought him without prayers. The prayers of Christians form an atmosphere of hope around the world, and especially during a time like this. Of course, it's obvious that we cannot each pray individually for every other human being living on our planet. That would make prayer a burden that would be too heavy to bear. But God, in His love, will direct us through the Holy Spirit to specific persons for whom we should pray. And when the Spirit leads us to pray, we will discover that we can do so with great power. Many Christians believe that it is inevitable that the first love for God will cool down and enthusiasm will eventually fade. It doesn't have to be that way. Just as in a marriage, love changes with time, so it will be in a marriage relationship with God. But enthusiasm can last, it doesn't have to die. The love grows deeper, the understanding grows greater, and the responsibilities that we have become plainer and easier to understand. Discouragement will come and darkness will sometimes hide the face of God for a moment. But faith will pierce the gloom and hope will glow even in spiritual darkness. The only time we can lose the Lord is when we turn away from Him. And even if we do that, He is ever willing and excited about taking us back. Let's not forget that. I was very inspired on Thursday when I turned on the news and on the BBC they made quite a big effort with Captain Tom Moore. Have you heard that name? You see, on Thursday he turned 100 years old. It was only three weeks ago that he decided to walk the back of his house a hundred times before he turns 100 years old himself. This was in order for him to raise 1,000 pounds for the NHS, for this COVID-19 thing. As it turns out, he has now raised more than 30 million pounds and money is still coming in. That is the one part of the good news and what inspires me uh, so much the fact that he's an ex-soldier, so was I. The other part is that he has also become part of the new UK number one hit. Now, I wouldn't normally use a platform like this to advertise UK number one hits. But this one is special. This one is different. The artist Michael Ball contacted Captain Tom 
and together it seems that they have made the song and the song reached as you know now number one you see captain tom's story is so inspiring in the uk at the moment there is so much doom and gloom and there is so much negativity all over the world but here in the uk we have a story of someone who has gone through all of this in his 100 year lifetime remember he was in the war as well and he has inspired the world then i listened to the number one song the number one song is really beautiful and you can go and have a listen and the reason why i'm telling this story is because of the lyrics of this new number one song i will read a few lines from this song now he says when you walk through a storm hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark at the end of the storm there's a golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark walk on through the wind walk on through the rain though your dreams be tossed and blown walk on walk on with hope in your heart and you will never walk alone you will never walk alone walk on walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone you will never walk alone isn't that interesting yes we want to say congratulations to captain tom for his birthday 100 years old and taking part in singing that song by the way and we want to say thank you for what he has done in raising so much money for the nhs but we want to say thank you for the inspiration that comes not only from his own life but how it was spent down by michael ball his own words and these words are so familiar because we read them in the bible as well you will never walk alone because we always have jesus by our side you will never be alone in your time of distress there will always be god by your side isaiah 41 verse 10 says fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you i will help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand i remember above the door in our classroom at helderberg college where i studied my theology course there was a printout of matthew 28 one of the verses i think it's verse 20 and it says behold i am with you always to the end of the age he's always with us and of course then there is romans chapter 8 verses 35 to 39 and this is one powerful statement by paul when he addresses the issues of us feeling that god might not be by our side it says who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we are being killed all the day all the day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god in christ jesus our lord nothing in this world can separate us from the love of christ 
nothing that exists has the power to come between you and God when you want to speak to God. Remember how you sometimes feel that your prayer doesn't go beyond the ceiling? Now you know that nothing can separate you from Him and that whenever you speak to Him, He will and can hear you and is listening. And therefore, keep on praying as He is listening. He is listening to us when we speak and he responds to you by saying what we read earlier in our text he says i have heard your prayer and seen your tears i will heal you that is god's business to hear our prayers and to see our tears and he's in the business of helping us he has no reason to let us down he has no reason to keep us on the end of a string. He wants to, and He can, and He will help us when we ask Him to. Sometimes it depends on us. Do you listen to Him? Do you hear His voice when He speaks to you? Do you just hear or do you actually listen? That can make a big difference. Remember when I was telling you about the kite that we had up in the air that we made and this kite flew so very well up far away in the sky and then after my dad left to go to work of course on the front of the fishing rod it was and out we let it go and far away. We allowed the kite to go out. We allowed the wind to take it up far, far away. The kite became so small that we could barely see it anymore. And we were overcome by the sense of happiness as we realized that we flew something so far away, something we created ourselves so far away from us. And I don't know if you ever flew kites. But did you know that you can send the kite little letters? We took small pieces of paper about this size and then you would write something on it like hello kite or something like that. And then you would make a tear in the page on one of the flat sides toward the middle. And then you would hook that up onto the line and you would just push it a little bit and the wind would come and blow this letter all the way up, up, up along the string all the way until it reaches the, the kite. But just as we were enjoying our achievement, the Air Force police arrived in one of their police vehicles and, and they noticed we were the ones flying the kites on the fishing rod. So they stopped and they came into our backyard and they asked if we could please reel in the kite immediately. It turns out our kite was flying in restricted airspace. Of course, they were acting in good faith, but they still had to tell us that if they saw our kite there again in restricted airspace, they would have to tell our dad what we have done. It was only then that it sunk in that when our da dad said that we were not allowed to put the kite on the front of the fishing rod, he meant that we were not supposed to be doing so. We heard him, but we did not listen. We can hear, but we don't always listen. With God, it's different. He always listens. Having troubles? Speak to God. I want to challenge you today to create a prayer life, if you don't have one already. I want to tell you that God will always listen. Will I be able to tell this little catch-up thing what to do next? Well, apparently I'm not so sure. Only when I do it correctly, according to Professor Noodlebrain. With God, 
you can call his name and he's there for you no matter what you've done in the past in fact you can call him whatever name you want he's your god and i want to leave that promise with you that god is always going to be there and responding to us he's always going to be listen he says i have heard your prayer i have seen your tears i will heal you i want to say thank you very much for listening again today we're just going to have one song to sing now and we say thank you to richard for playing for us and for providing the music for that in the meantime i'm looking forward to seeing you next week continue to pray to god and until we see each other again god bless